Hey everybody, Ben here for the Burner Podcast and welcome to Blood Bowl Formations Tomb King Setup. So we're having a look at every team in Blood Bowl, whether it's the core rulebook, the teams of Legend PDF like this team here, or the expanded NAF teams with Slan and Corn. that's Leap and Frenzy, do recommend those teams. And we're looking at the best ways to set up your team, whether you are kicking or receiving, we are looking at where to place your players and why. So if you are planning on busting out Tomb Kings, and I do recommend it because it is a challenge, and they can perform very, very well. We've had a few tournament results coming where Tomb Kings have done very, very well indeed. So definitely worth looking at um, as, a, as, a, as a Legends team. Um, whether you're playing with them or against them, we're going to talk through some of the position or some of their strengths, some of the best ways to place them and some of the best ways to beat them. Okay, Tomb Kings. So um, let's do good, bad, good. Let's do the um, stuff sandwich. So good, up to four, strength five, movement five, big guys with no nega trait. Absolutely awesome pieces. Those are the Tomb Guardians, these bad boys here. They are basically just really good undead ogres. Now in League, they've got decay, which means they're more likely to die. And I mean, they're undead. So this is like actually die dead. Um, I guess the best way is they get totaled to the point where their undead insurance company will not replace them. So, um, or will not repair them. So you've got that. That is a fantastic boon. The downside here is the team is reasonably slow. Okay, skeletons are what? Movement 5. Everybody's edge 4 plus at best. Uh, so you are going to have less ability to dodge and less breakthrough and less counter strike. So you've got to plan to be a couple of steps slower than your opponent. But the other good side is you get two pieces with block ready to go. These blitzers here are movement 6 with block uh, edge 4 plus. So they're, they're fine as ball carriers. And you've got two uh, throwers as well who are edge 4 plus with sure hands and I think pass so you do have some ways to kind of mitigate your speed and your agility so with that in mind when we look at defending with Kemri Kemri or Tomb Kings I'm going to call them Kemri a lot I think there's a couple of things to consider you are slower so you need to prepare to be a little bit deeper back and when it comes to providing some kind of secondary or a safety you need them to be even further back as well and that is so that you can avoid dodging avoid rushing and just man managing to place yourself in the right position so the first one we're going to look at is the chevron defense <laughs> Normally, we look at if your team is bashier or dashier. Most teams are going to be dashier than the Tomb King. So the Chevron defense is a delayed defense, okay? This one is going to be great if you are playing against a team that is faster than you, that you think is likely to want to score quickly, or a team that is stronger than you and you think are going to want to deploy heavy on the line and try and beat your Tomb Guardians up. We are going to, we are, we are going to annoy and deny our opponent both of those options. So... Line of scrimmage, we put three sacrificial skeletons on there. These they, They've got thick skull, they're armor 8 plus, they've got regeneration. If they go down, they are probably likely to get back up again. Uh, and you may just have a bench when it comes to Kemri anyway. So you've got a bit of a boon there. You can put these dudes on the line and your opponent's going to get a few blocks. If you deploy them together, they are going to get less assisted blocks. But we can safely assume that they're going to deploy five wide against your three linemen and just have their merry little way with them. That is fine, because we don't care about those guys. They're 40k, and they are there to get in the way on the ground or standing. Doesn't even matter. This is where the fun begins. So, their only route to the end zone is through the middle here. And to do that, they've got to clear these guys out. That's okay too. They're going to have to clear all these guys out, and then they're going to have to run down the gauntlet here between two Tomb Guardians, and then you've got some safeties. Now, the difficult thing is here. If you've got throwers that you do not want to be eligible for a jolly good blitzing, you have to deploy them as your safeties. If you've got spare linemen, then you can drop a lineman here and put a blitzer back. We are assuming that you do not have a bench, and then what you want to do is protect your throwers. If you deployed your throwers up here and kept your blitzers back here, which you can do, you will have a better uh, reserve blitz ability because these guys are movement six with block. However, looking at the targets, your opponent is going to likely to blitz. That's a strength five tomb guardian. That's a strength five tomb guardian. And if this guy's a thrower, what do you think your opponent's going to do? What would you do? You're going to take their thrower out. That's one less sure hands piece. He doesn't have a combat skill and he's only strength three. Easy target. You're going to give them six targets here. Four of them are strength five big boys. And the other two are going to be blockers. Okay, they're going to have block. They're going to be slightly more protected. They're going to have better armor and just be better protected when it comes to combat skills. But here's the fun thing. Look at the way the uh, Tomb Guardian 
tackle zones are here. You can see that there is only one square in between those tackle zones and that that keeps happening. I need to fix that. Uh, everybody here, every square is essentially covered. If they take this blitzer out, there's no break here in tackle zones between your second line and your first reserve line. So they cannot get through. If they want to go down the edge, they're going to have to run through a tomb guardian. Now the beautiful thing is here, if they want to blitz your guardian, they're going to have to have a minotaur. And you know what? They're going to have to have the Minotaur. There is basically no other way to get a big blitz with a strength 5 piece and have it be pretty reliable. <laughs> Minor Minotaur is reliable? I don't know. It's probably the best way to do it. That means that the road is shut, okay? They've got very little option. They can commit. They can go heavy. If they've got, if you're playing Skaven and they want to go for a breakout and they've got a Rat Ogre, first of all, you're going to have a bench to put your lineman up front. And then you can double stack your Blitzer here just to avoid it. But... They can come on here and they can get a good block. But even with an assist here and, dodge and uh, marking that guy there and going through here, they're going to need a strength 5 piece to get a profitable block on the Tomb Guardian on the edge. And once they've done that, you've got a Blitzer here and a Thrower here and a Thrower here. Now, these guys are movement, what, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So your far Thrower can reach the edge and this guy can reach that. So basically, both the Throwers have got the middle covered and the edge covered. And let's face it, your opponent has got two choices when it comes to the edge guardians. They can base them, and then you're going to get a free two dice strength five block. Okay, that's going to be really good for you. Or they can leave them, and at movement four, they are as fast as a Black Orc. That is fantastic. That is why this team is an ever so slightly underrated. These big guys, they're just, it's just a team of strength boosted black orcs surrounded by skeletons. It's awesome. So if they want to blitz your blitzer, that's fine. But if they leave them in base contact with your tomb guardian, you are going to win in player numbers pretty quickly. They want to go this way, tomb guardian, tomb guardian here, tomb guardian here, blitzer here, blitzer here. You have got a fantastic shield there protecting your throwers who become your safeties. But just any combat strike they go here is going to be risky. There is no gimmies here when you are playing against tomb kings. And that is assuming that they are going to want to bring the pain. They may not. They may just want to farm this line and wait for you to come to them. In which case, you can close this line up and wait. Or take cheeky good blitzes. If you can get a good blitzer blitz, if you can get a good tomb guardian blitz here, while maintaining this screen of strength, really good strength and combat players, you, it's fantastic. So one downside, you do not have the speed to bounce up. So if they deploy and disengage, you're going to have to wait for them. But you know what? Waiting, there's no fumbles, there's no double skulls, but you do get a chance to kind of pick and choose, making a good blitz. And patience is key with Tomb Kings. Having a good screen with good defense, let them waste a turn. Let them waste all the turns you want. They are going to have to come through you, and that plays into your hands. Alternatively, if you're playing against a tougher team and you're not so worried about them having a big breakthrough, you can bring the guys into the center. So we've got a strong box here. The same applies when it comes to the line of scrimmage. Three vulnerable skeletons, let them have their way with them. Then you've got these four Tomb Guardians deployed two squares back. They are ready to pounce. They've got every edge covered and you've got a great blitz that cannot fail. That cannot fail. There's no loner on these guys. There's no nega traits on these guys. They are just going to move three squares and punch a dude with two dice. Because the blitz costs the fourth square of the movement. Then you've got these two blitzers ready to play wide sweepers. And you've got these throwers ready to give them that extra assist that you need. The strong box allows you to let them come around the side. And then you will be able to counter punch. It allows you to just let them have the line of scrimmage and then you know what they are going to have to trundle through to you and this will give you the opportunity to mark their players with tomb guardians and force them to either commit strength to beating them or to take risky dodges to get away with them so the strong box gives you the same kind of thing it's just closer together and you will be able to protect your power more the other thing you can do is simply just deploy Tomb Guardians into the front line. Now you can go five wide with these guys with a skeleton in the middle. You can go four Tomb Guardians on the line. But beware, that is a risk and your opponent will be able to get profitable blocks on some of your strongest players. But if you're playing against a team like Skaven or whatever and you're willing to just play the I am stronger than you, you can go and score but I'm going to murder you, you can commit. I don't think it's the right, <laughs> I don't think it's the right strategy but it is going to be a lot of fun. So offense with Kemri. We've just talked about patience and strength and the ability to murder your opponent. And this just puts the ball in your court. 
almost literally it puts a ball in your half of the court but the, the point still stays the same so 5411 we've looked at this a hundred times because it's so solid it gives you a screen bubble here with a reasonable collection contingent so wherever the ball goes you will have one two three four five six squares of movement from both these guys in the backfield to protect and collect that's what we want to do here now this is where Kemri starts to shine so there's a couple of things you can do uh, with the edge pieces here you can put your blitzers wide to make the most of movement or you can put your blitzers close to make the most of blitzing now it's up to you it depends on how you want to do this for better movement it is better to have the blitzers wide and the linemen close because the linemen can then move in the blitzers can sweep around and tag I like to play them a little bit closer because what's likely to happen is you might just farm out some vulnerable targets here and then you can move your blitzer in to just go for a deeper strike. That can be quite fun. However, the most best fun, mostest funnest piece here is the fact you've got four Tomb Guardians on the line, no loner, no combat skills. Let's be fair, this is going to be a time to farm two die blocks. They don't start with Mighty Blow, but as your team develops, they jolly well better get it. It's a strength skill. They need three casualties. So this is your opportunity to play. Let's block some dudes and make some casualties. So what you want to do is just farm these blocks as much as possible with these big players. It is that simple. Now you can stagger your line. I do like having the fifth lineman here because you can... I don't know, you can just swap it around. It depends on how they deploy. What you want to do is deploy as many of your Tomb Guardians so that they can farm these blocks rightwards and leftwards, whichever is against the flow of the ball. So if the ball goes here, what you want to do is farm blocks this way. And that is going to maximize that strength and create more opportunities for your guys to get casualties. Now, whether you are playing a league and you want to develop your Tomb Guardians or playing a tournament and you want to score those casualties, the strategy is the same. You have got this protection bubble. If your opponent rolls a blitz, if you fail on your turn hard and leave it, your opponent is going to have to work at coming to collect the ball. But wherever the ball goes with Tomb Kings, you've got to protect it. So the ball lands here, you move one dude up, and you tag that ball before you do anything. Now you've got a great screen with the 5411, so you can protect the ball you can even drop the other thrower down and not even bother to pick it up if you're happy with it and then you can just go farm out casualties it's going to be the best way to do it once you start getting that attrition on your side which you will do with the amount of players you've got with the regeneration you've got and with the strength you've got you are going to win most attrition battles and then when you are playing even with edge four people edge four plus people numbers are just fantastic you may struggle to pick the ball up forever that is definitely a risk when it comes to tomb kings but if there's no one on their side to stop you when you do you're good to go and the other thing you can do very well with tomb kings is they cage up really nicely so i like the spread okay i like the four four at uh, the five four one one because it creates that shield across the it creates that screen across the entire pitch now if you're willing to gamble on a ball going wide you can go for the seven four one now the advantage here is you've gone massive on the line of scrimmage so you do get the opportunity to absolutely farm those blocks we brought the uh, edge lineman in closer so if the ball lands basically anywhere in this bubble you are going to be able to protect it with three players and then give yourself a delayed pickup point okay that's going to be great for you the whole point here is to create a cage somewhere here farm out some blocks and then move down to support and the whole point is you will create a bigger stronger death star much quicker on it gives your opponent less of an opportunity to go for a cheeky leap dodge play into to sneak the ball to get onto the ball and this is going to be really effective to run out the clock. Okay, if you want to just have a half where you control the timing, you control most of the blocks, 7-4 offense, get these guys deployed like this. Wherever the ball goes, you are going to be able to screen and protect it. If it goes wide, it is a bit of a risk. But if it goes wide deep, you can just maneuver players to create a screen. You are going to get first dibs at this. Now, ideally, though, the ball's going to end up somewhere here. You can go lineman to the top, lineman to the way, throw it to the edge, throw it to the edge and just protect it if you want. Um, or you can just go in, tag it with a dude, farm a load of blocks. That's the strength here. That is your plan. This is your protection element. This is your destruction element okay you farm a block then the guardian farms a block then this guardian farms a block then the blitzer takes a two die block with block you've just got a ton of dice to remove players with seven against three you should be able to um 
basically mean that they're starting with eight activations on their turn. It doesn't even matter if they're stunned, prone, whatever. You are inhibiting their ability to do things. And the cool thing about Kemri is you've got this little dude in the middle. So if a guy ends up here and you've done your turn and you've protected the ball and it's here and you've taken all the blocks you can do, he goes for a cheeky little kick, gets that removal, you're good to go. If you lose a skeleton, you've probably got a couple more. So when it comes to Tomb Kings, they are a very unique Blood Bowl team, and I'm so happy that they still exist in the teams of Legend. They are a challenge to play against. They are a bigger challenge to play. And we want challenges. We want different ways to play. That's why some of these teams are so fantastic. Now, Tomb Kings can feel a bit dusty, a bit dry. However, it is it, this team is going to teach you about positioning. It's going to teach you about ball failures, but it's mostly going to teach you to love cheap strength five pieces. I love Tomb Kings, I'm glad they're here, I cannot wait to see what they look like in the new edition, but for now, if you don't have a Tomb King team, check out Punga, check out Vortice, go crazy, get them to the tabletop, they're performing well because they are great teams, but this team will reward you for playing them well. So if you are looking for a Blood Bowl challenge, something to learn, something to master, Tomb Kings, I could not recommend more. Anyway guys, I'm going to disappear. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of Tomb Kings and what you think they're going to become in the future. And uh, I'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Thanks for watching. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.